the gospel is Christ in me, Christ in me. Mystery of the gospel is Christ in me, Christ in me. The, uh, the phrase mentioning robe of righteousness. I will read that for you. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adores herself with her jewels. Amen. What amazing scripture. Those of you who like to wear jewels, those of you who like to get ready, it is scriptural. Don't worry. <laughs> Amen. Because sometimes people think the minute we become believers or Christians, we have to wear the robe of righteousness. So let us not wear any jewels. Let us wear only white and white. That's not what it is saying. Okay. So let's see today. What is it saying? Okay. Let's go to the book of uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse number 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. See, in the New Testament, where uh, Paul writes in, in Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, I have found in the, uh, in, in the in Pauline's writings, in the epistles, often the phrase used as put on, put on the new man, put on Christ, put on the new nature. What does this put on means? When you say that in Greek, you know, I, I like to study uh, in Greek and understand more deeply. So when I referred that in Greek, the word is uh, endio, endio. Okay, you need not remember that. The deeper meaning behind that is the word put on Christ. The meaning is like how you put on your dress, how you wear your dress, how you wear your garments. That is what is trying to talk about. Put on Christ. Now, for human mind, the first question that we get in our mind is, how can I put on another human? How can I put on another body? Because we, our mind tries to relate to Jesus as the body, as human, uh, human being, as the son of man. You and I know very well, Jesus is not just the son of man. He is, he is the son of God. So now for our mind, because we are human beings, because we were in too much carnality, we often think to put on Christ, to put on Jesus means to put on the body, to put on another human being. That's not what it is. How can you do that? How can you wrap yourself with another human being? That's not what it is uh, trying to say. See, the, the put on Christ, this you should understand because it is used often. I can go on giving you so many scriptures. Maybe quickly I will show you because you should, uh, you should register in your mind. Okay, quickly I'll show you. You can show them... Um, what is that put on Christ? I have taken this in NASB. Now show them the next verse, NASB. When it is translated, can you see that? It is written as, all of you who were baptized in Christ. Those of you who are yet to take baptism, take the scripture. Have clothed yourself with Christ. You have clothed. You, are, you have put on Christ. That's the translation. Now show them in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 24. And to put on the new self. Can you see? I told in the book of Galatians, Romans, Colossians, Ephesians, this phrase is used. And to put on the new self, which is which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness. So what I'm trying to say is in all these um, uh, portions in Romans, Colossians, Ephesians, uh, Paul is using to put on Christ. What is that to put on Christ? What is that to wear Christ? I said it is not like a human being or a body that you're wrapping yourself around. You must understand when it says to put 
on Christ. It is talking about the nature of Christ. It is talking about Christ himself. What is Christ? How do we define Christ? Christ, the anointed one, what is he? He is the righteousness of God. There is no sin in him. He did no sin. In him, no sin, right? So because he is the righteousness of God, when you put on Christ, it is talking about putting on the righteousness of God. Now you must understand, whenever the Bible says put on the righteousness of God, whenever the Bible says put on Christ, put on new self, it is not trying to call you for justification. This is not a call for salvation. You are already saved. These letters are written, this portion of the Bible is written to the believers. What is it saying? It is saying those who have been baptized, go to Galatians 3.27, the verse that I showed you, second verse. Those who have been baptized have put on Christ. That means you are already saved. Those who are already saved, they have put on Christ. It is not a call for salvation. It is not a call for your justification. You are already justified. You are already saved. Now it is a call for sanctification. Because sanctification, holiness that you are set apart is a lifelong process that is happening. The God is wholly sanctifying you. It says that is Holiness is, is the, it's not the action that you do. It is what God is doing through you with your cooperation. Amen? To, un to understand this, it may be deep to understand. You have to go back to my part two and study difference between righteousness, holiness, and godliness. So coming to this point on put on Christ. When I say put on Christ, that is you're clothing yourself in the righteousness of God. Why? I said it is not called for justification. It is called for sanctification. If you remember a couple of Sundays ago, I made this statement. Where your justification finishes, your sanctification begins right that means if you are not having sanctification or if you're not producing holy works if a person is not having the works of righteousness then in the first place we have to question if he or she was justified if he or she is justified he or she has been made the righteousness of god they will eventually produce the righteous acts there will be holy acts now let's uh, simplify it more further that is putting on christ uh, in the book of uh, isaiah we just saw in the book of isaiah the first was isaiah chapter 61 we saw it talks about robe of righteousness god said i will cover them i will cover them with garments garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness right to understand why God says, I will cover you with garments, I will cover you with robe of righteousness, you must go back to find our answers. Most often, the answers are found in the book of Genesis. So when you go back to Genesis, you remember when God created Adam and Eve, they were covered with the glory of God. They were not covered with clothing, cotton, linen, polyester. They were covered with glory of God. And when he, a Satan master deceiver lied to them and deceived them, the minute they disobeyed, ate the fruit, they became subjects to Satan. They became slaves of Satan. They gave the authority to Satan and they came under Satan. Immediately what happened? They lost the nature of God because they are no longer slaves to God. They became voluntarily a slave to Satan. So now that they become voluntarily a slave to Satan, what happened? They got into fear, shame, guilt, condemnation. How do I say that? The moment God started walking that day, it says in the book of Genesis chapter 3, fall of man, when God started walking at the cool of the day, Adam and Eve went and hid themselves. And then they... God stood from far and said, where are you? I really like this. God can anyway see that, right? God can anyway walk into anywhere he wants to. He is El Shaddai, he is Elohim, he is almighty, all belongs to him. He can walk in, he can barge in. I appreciate that fact with God. He gives you your privacy. Amen? He gives you your freedom. He gives you your free will. 
what an amazing God we serve. Amen. He does not intrude your privacy. He does not force anything on you. He's like, okay, you want to be away from you? Then I remain at a distance. This is so important to follow in our day-to-day -day relationship with your spouse, with your family, with your children, with your friends, with your colleagues. We are like God. We, we must give, uh, give people their freedom, their privacy. Don't intrude. Don't force. Uh, don't take someone's things and barge in. Give them, everybody, their personal space because God is like that. God says, Let you, may you come voluntarily. So the moment Adam and Eve hid themselves, he said, where are you? As though he does not know. <laughs> Every time he asks a question, it is not because he does not know. When he's asking a question, it's because he wants to know your response. He wants to know you. He wants to know how much you know. Even he knows you very well. But yet he wants to know, do you know him? He's trying to make you understand to know him better. So he asks, where are you? He said, I am afraid and I hid. We have, we have, we, we have hidden ourselves. Why? The, immediately Adam and Eve says, because we are uh, ashamed that we are naked and we don't want to come. So you know the story what happens after that. So God says, did you eat the fruit that I asked you not to eat? So they ate the fruit. So what happened? They, they, they were ashamed and they went and hid. Why were they ashamed? They were ashamed because they were covered with glory of God, commonly the phrase used. What is that glory of God? They were covered in righteousness of God, the rightness of God, the holiness of God, the perfection of God, the nature of God. They were covered with that because God is holy, tries holy. So whatever he deals with, whomever he talks to has to be holy because he cannot stand unholy. He cannot stand dirty. He cannot not stand ugly because that is not what he is where there is light there is no darkness so God was interacting with his children Adam and Eve they were just like him they were like God now that they lost the glory they lost the right standing with God they lost the righteousness of God the right doings because they disobeyed God so what they did to cover their shame they went and took the fig leaves and they sew they made their first fashion designing and they <laughs> they were and the fashion designing was a total flop show because God did not approve it. God said this dress I don't approve it. You wear this uh, fashion designing costume, uh, the, uh, the fashionable costume and you come uh, in the book of uh, Matthew, the prop, the parable that uh, Jesus used. You remember the king invites everyone for the banquet of his son's wedding. Everybody comes in good wedding clothes. There will be few people who come in not good clothes. And what king says? Take these people, strip them off, and put them in the prison. What is it? What is that Jesus is talking about? Just because somebody came in poor clothes, they are put forever in hell. What is that? The meaning is the one who is not clothed in robe of righteousness, the one who is not wearing Christ, will be put forever in hell. So the great banquet that God has invited for you and for me, the wedding of his son, the son of God with the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, when we come, we all have to be very well dressed. What very well dressed? Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Rolex. <laughs> no, we have to be dressed in robe of righteousness. We have to wear the Christ, the new self, the new nature, wear that, it says. So when you wear that and come, then you are approved of God, accepted in the beloved. You stand holy, perfect, righteous before God. As Christ is, so are you. You're putting on Christ. Amen. So God said, these fig leaves are rejected. So he, he made a provision. And God did the fashion designing. He took a lamb. He cut the ram. He took the skin. First leather clothing. <laughs> Idea was from God. So he took the skin and he covered them. What does that represent? It represented that Jesus would die and we take Jesus' blood, Jesus' righteousness and we are 
covered in Jesus' holiness, Jesus' righteousness. Amen. Forever. This was the plan of God. So every time when you change your garments, when you're wearing, you, you must always remember, like Adam and Eve, we were ashamed. There was so much of shame, right? Guilt, fear. What, what was the root of condemnation? Guilt that Adam had. Adam, Adam and Eve were very guilty to face God. They were guilty. They didn't want to stand God or talk to God. Why? Because they were stripped off of the righteousness of God. They were unholy. They realized they were unholy because everyone is given the moral conscience. I told you a few Sundays ago. So the moral conscience they had and they knew that they have done something wrong. Similarly, even today, man is having that guilt and condemnation. And the root of guilt and condemnation is what? Fear. They were afraid of God. They feared God so much. God, 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 God said, don't, do not fear. Don't fear. Every time they are afraid of God. God said, you don't have to fear because fear is the root and the fruit is guilt, condemnation, rejection, disease, all the sin nature. Fear is the root. Why fear came in? Why did fear come in the first place? Because they were not the righteousness of God. They had not done right doings. They cannot stand God because God is holy. You remember on Mount Sinai when God came, when 3,000 Israelites had joined, when God appeared on Mount Sinai, the Bible says that the moment the presence of God came on Mount Sinai, the presence was so strong, so holy, the Israelites touched the mountain and all 3,000 people died. So God is so holy that when his presence comes, he is so righteous that unholy man, unrighteous man cannot even stand. He cannot even see God with his naked eyes. So that is where in the New Testament, we see the covenant restored. We see the old covenant fulfilled is the right word. The old covenant fulfilled. We see the restoration of the 3,000 people dying in the book of Acts. We see 3,000 people Taking the baptism, fire anointing they get, right, in the book of uh, Acts. How, how did that happen? Now the same presence of God comes and nobody dies. Why? Because God has justified you. God has made you righteous. Where? In your spirit, not in your body. You must understand this. In your spirit. So in your spirit, you are made righteous. So when it says put on Christ, it is talking about garments. So I told from beginning, the plan of God was to give a garment of Christ. Amen. For Adam and Eve, he did. Throughout the Bible, you see that throughout. When God gave instructions to Moses, can you show them the book of Ezekiel? Instruction to Moses. He, he told the uh, uh, priest, the priest should be dressed in holy garments. I will read that for you so you understand quickly. Once the priests have entered the holy area, they must not go out into the outer court until they have left behind the garments in which they minister for these are holy. They are to put on other clothes before they approach the places that are for the people. God gave instructions to priests that when you come in to the office, when you come in to the duty, you have to put on the uniform. Right? What police officer do you do? You wear your police uniform and go to office, right? Right? So when you report to duty in the morning, you wear your uniform. You have been designated as the police officer. But when you go to the duty, you put on your uniform. Am I right? So because you put on uniform, you're not the police officer. Because you're the police officer, you put on uniform. Now, can I borrow his uniform and put on and go? <laughs> the government will punish me. Because I am not the police officer. Just by wearing the uniform, I don't become police officer. Similarly, you are the righteousness of God. Because you are the righteousness of God, wear the uniform, the robe of righteousness. Amen. So you wear the robe of righteousness. Glory to God. And you report to duty. What you report? Report to duty means what? You are a son of God. You are not a servant of God. But you choose to be his bond slave because you love him so much. And you report to duty by taking authority. Amen. Police officer, imagine... Uh, he sees a robber uh, stealing something or doing some crime. He cannot call the government and say, robber is stealing, robber is uh, hitting. What do I do? They will shout at him and say, take your gun and go take the lati and go and hit him. Run and catch him. You don't have to call me. You don't have to cry to me. 
That's exactly what God is saying. You are a police officer. You are a black cat commando, which FGC understands. Amen? So what a black cat commando should do? Wear the uniform and not fear the terrorist. You have to evict the terrorist. You have to say, get out. You are illegal here. You have no right to be here. You have no right in my house. You have no right in my body. You have no right in my family. You have no right in my friend's life, in my church. You have no right. You evict him. You have to wear the uniform. If you don't wear the uniform, he will not fear. Though he also knows. A robber may know that you are a police officer. But when you wear that star, when you wear that cap, when you go with the gun, the moment he sees you, he is afraid. Amen? Similarly, when you go, though you are the righteousness of God, you have to put on the righteousness of God. When you put on means what? In your mind, you have to renew your mind. It's not a physical garment. You have to renew your mind. So when you go as the righteousness of God, the moment devil sees you, he's afraid of you. Because he understands you have not come as an ordinary human being. You have come as a superhuman being. Amen. You have come as a superhero like your Jesus. Amen. You're wearing now like a black cat commando, the uniform. And the moment he sees you, he knows he understands that you have come to evict him. You have come to destroy him. You have come to tell, ask him to cast him out in Jesus' name. Right? In what authority he takes the gun? In what authority he takes? By the law and order by the law of the government of India. He takes the authority, his gun, his uh, uh, lati, right? You take from which government? It is the kingdom of dear son. So you take authority in the name of Jesus. That's why it says, take the name of Jesus and say, devil, to go. Go. In your, there's sickness in your body? Command. Because you are the righteousness of God. Amen. So throughout the Bible, it's always talking about putting on righteousness throughout the Bible. So I, I told you, in, even in the New Testament, the parable that Jesus mentioned is the nothing but the robe of righteousness. And I told in the Old Testament, the priest had to wear the garment. So when he gets in, he has to get in with the uniform. Now you and I are not part-time priest. According to the uh, New Testament, you and I are priest unto the Lord. You and I are priest unto the Lord. Girl is also a priest. Boy is also a priest. God calls us, uh, daughters also sons. God, so all daughters, don't, do, don't uh, worry. Why God is calling sons? Why can't God call sons daughter? Let me make, uh, clarify. God calls sons also daughters. And God calls sons bride of Christ. So for you, all the men, what God calls you? Bride. You don't have to be offended. So for son, he calls bride. For daughter, he calls son. Because in Christ, according to Galatians chapter 3, we all are equal. Son is also a hair. Daughter is also a hair. Amen. We all are one in Christ Jesus. Because God is a spirit. He does not see us in carnality. He does not see our physical body. He sees us in spirit. That's the new covenant. So throughout the New Test Old Testament, it's talking about the robe. It's talking about putting on the cloth. For the priest, he told to put on the cloth. For the priest, he told, wear that and come to the office. Always in the Old Testament, they cannot get into the office. You remember I taught you high priest garments Every piece of garment had so deep meaning. The color of garment had so deeper meaning. So putting on the robe of righteousness was the plan of God always. Why? Show them in the book of Isaiah chapter 64. It says, the clothes that you're wearing are like filthy garments. What is that? Filthy garments. Let me give you one small illustration to understand. Uh, I, I request Sandrin to come forward. And you know, wearing a, a filthy garment. Like say for, uh, for, for instance, like you just uh, consider... The her to be uh, any of you. So uh, I'll read that scripture, uh, then we'll get into that. But we are like, you can wear this, we are like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Now do you understand the story that I told you Adam and Eve wore leaf? It gets faded, right? It gets dried up. So God is saying our righteousness, the Bible is saying our righteousness are like filthy rack. I took this and I made it as dirty as possible. This is what I could <laughs> do it. I wiped it with all the dust and got this to show you that our righteousness are like 
filthy rags. That means before a person could get saved, okay? This is not just he is unrighteous because of his works. He is sinful in nature. He has sin nature. From where he got this sin nature? From Adam. From Adam, it automatically came to him, sin nature. So what we all are wearing, we all are wearing filthy rags, the garment that is very dirty, filthy, abusive, very bad uh, garment, stinking, can't even go near. God cannot at all come near. That is what we are covered with, filthy rags. Okay, we are covered with filthy rags. On the cross of Calvary, what did Jesus do? Jesus took the garments. There was a great exchange that happened. He gave us his robe of righteousness. That is, he is perfect. He is holy. He is right. The rightness of God. He gave the righteousness to us and he took our filthy garments, right? On the cross, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, God made him sin who knew no sin. So God made him sin. So when Jesus went to the cross, he died with our sin on the cross. The sin of the whole world, he died on the cross, right? Because he, 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 was, uh, he, he was made sin, God had to shut his eyes. God had to turn his face from him. God had to reject him. So he was crucified, brutally murdered. He was crucified. Every drop of his blood was shed. Now, this garment, when he goes to Hades, he goes to Hades, right? Three days. After that, he is resurrected. When he is resurrected, now when he comes, we don't see this garment. When Jesus comes, the Bible says, he was resurrection for our justification. That means on Jesus, there is no filthy rags. What is that Jesus is now when he is resurrected? He is wearing, you, on top of this you wear, so I want to show them. So he is wearing the robe of righteousness because he is the robe of righteousness. It's not like he is putting on. He is righteousness. So when Jesus rise, raises from the dead, you know, there is no filthy rags. So today when I see Jesus, I see he was raised for my justification. Is my sin on him? My sin is hidden. My, my sin is uh, washed away is the right word. It's not covered like the Old Testament. It has been removed. So it is removed, right? Now I only see the robe of righteousness. Now can you see, the, this is the filthy rags that we all had, right? We all had this filthy rag. So from beginning, Adam and Eve, what they did for this filthy rag, they took the leaves and they covered the filthy rag. But filthy rag can be seen, filthy rag can be smelled. So what God told from before, God kept on telling, for priest I will give a garment. So priest would wear like this in Old Testament, right? When priest is wearing in Old Testament priest, God told him to wear holy garments and wear a turban on his head. What was the turban on the turban written? Holy unto God. Amen? That's what is written on the turban of the priest. Holy, that means set apart for God. In the Old Testament, the priest's sins were only covered. Okay? He would come like this, so he's not dead when he's doing the work of God. Now, in New Testament, you can remove and wear only white. In New Testament, the sins are completely washed the sins are completely washed. So as she removed, God removed. God completely removed and she is wearing the robe of righteousness. She is got Christ in her. So when Paul says, put on, when Paul says, put on Christ, she is already the righteousness of God. She is not called for justification. She is not called for salvation. She is already saved. When, uh, when the Bible says, put on Christ, it is not talking about your position. Your position is, you are a son of God. You are a child of God. You are the righteousness of God. Is your position. When it says, put on Christ. When it says, put on the robe of righteousness. It's talking about, take your practical uh, work. Uh, take your duty. Take your office. Wear the uniform. You are already the righteousness of God. Wear the uniform. So when you understand that you are already the righteousness of God, when you understand you are already the child of God, that's why in the book of Romans chapter 13 it says, awake, awake, first thing, wake up, first thing, wake up, second thing, remove, that is, strip off the filthy racks. I'll, I'll make you read in the book of Colossians. This is what it says even in Romans chapter 13. Strip off, then what is the next thing you do? What you did after stripping off, you wear the 
robe of righteousness now who is robe of righteousness jesus is robe of righteousness you remember the prodigal son that jesus told when prodigal son did all the nonsense when he came back what did uh, what did the father do father said bring the fine clothes bring the best robe what is the best robe why the best robe first thing you have to wear the robe of righteousness when you wear the robe of righteousness it equips you empowers you to do righteous acts let me prove that please show them romans chapter 13 but put on the lord jesus christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires the scripture says put on lord jesus christ right put on robe of righteousness or put on lord jesus christ is the bible contradicting absolutely not put on jesus christ means what jesus is robe of righteousness jesus is the righteousness of god the rightness of god no sin perfect in him there is no sin he is perfect so when bible is saying put on i like this phrase i like this statement first it says put on then it says and make no provision i like you know bible has so much of deep meaning in every statement first it says put on then it says make no provision generally when a person gets saved he comes to christianity what happens always people tell him make no provision for sin don't give a, 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 a foothold to, to satan make sure that you don't sin working righteous acts how do i explain this see generally people think that i perform righteous acts to become righteous he made you the righteousness first wake up to that last sunday i told the knowledge that you are the righteousness once you wake up to that what she did she stripped off i told remove that it's no longer covered it's removed so strip off that that's what jesus did right on the cross of calvary we had great exchange but why still she is doing that because we were saved in our spirit we are three part we are saved and sanctified made righteous in our spirit but our body our mind is yet to be sanctified and yet to be renewed our mind has to be renewed so our body is under progress that is why though you are the righteousness of god still you might do unrighteous works now how to overcome that how to overcome guilt fear shame first thing is put on first thing is put on the righteousness of god when you put on what happens it equips you empowers you to make no provision for flesh what is provision for flesh i'll come to that the word provision when i see that in greek the word provision is to plan in your mind a thought thinking see you will not go and do a crime murder theft you will not do it a illegal affair you will not do it first it is a thought right it all begins with a thought so make no provision means the thought you will not entertain that thought we know how to take command of our thoughts right we know how to command of our take command of our thoughts right we don't fight thoughts with thoughts we fight thoughts with words so we take command how do we fight thoughts with words what word will you say at this time i am the righteousness of god amen so when you say i am the righteousness of god you make no provision to flesh so you have to put on this you have to wear that you have to put on because when you took baptism you have been clothed like this so generally what many people do they wear white and white and go every sunday okay white and white outside but black and black inside <laughs> that's not how we have to be right it's not about the color that god is talking about it is about the nature right god is talking about coat of many colors amen you remember the story of joseph jacob and joseph father jacob represents father god daddy god uh, joseph represents son the beloved son of god so what did he do he didn't give him black white uh, red <laughs> what he gave he gave him coat of many colors that's why i try to find my wardrobe and i wore the coat of many colors so why coat of many colors so i was going on thinking okay this is not strong concordance or vans expository or uh, any any commentary commentary it is ppa commentary what is that ppa commentary why i found coat of many colors is related to robe of righteousness when uh, the 
you might have studied in physics, right? When a white light passes through prism, it disperses what? Many colors. So all the many colors put together becomes white. That is what is the coat of many colors. Jesus has many attributes, right? Jesus has many attributes. He is the royalty, the purple robe that talks about in the book of Gospels. And it says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, they gave him the robe of scarlet. Can you show them that scripture? Matthew chapter 27, I want you to see that. They gave him robe of scarlet. They mocked him. They told, they told to Jesus, the Roman soldiers, right? When he was going through the trial, the scourging and beating and pain, they mocked him. They, they hit him. They put the crown on crown of thorns and they said oh are you the king of Jews so in the book of Matthew chapter 27 it says that they mocked him and they put the robe they put the garment of the scarlet they put the scarlet garment and they mocked him they hit him after putting the uh, scarlet garment and they said are you the king and after hitting him what Jesus did Jesus was quiet Jesus was quiet like a sheep in front of his shearers Jesus was silent. He did not utter. He did not defend. He did not fight back. He did not say anything. He was silent because he is the righteousness and he came to do the work of the Lord. In the book of Matthew chapter 27, verse 31. I'll read that. Please listen to it. It's so beautiful. After that they had mocked him, they took the robe of him and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify. The Bible says when they started to mock Jesus, what they did? They mocked him and they put the robe on him. You can go on to read from verse 27 itself. The soldiers, the governor, verse number 28. They stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. I really like this uh, portion. It says they put on him a scarlet robe. So I was thinking, should I bring a black robe or scarlet robe? Why I bought black? I'll tell you. See, scarlet robe, no doubt, uh, it represents, scarlet is a color that represents sin. In the book of Isaiah, it says, your sins are as scarlet, but I make them as white as snow. Right? I make them as white as snow. Your uh, sins are like uh, 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 crimson as red, but I make them as wool. So the scarlet robe that they put on Jesus was trying to say that you, he took our sins and he gave us the robe of righteousness. Now, when you are the righteousness of God, your mind and body is not renewed. Because your mind and body is not renewed, you have to put on in your mind. Let me give you a scripture from Amplified. Go to Colossians chapter 3. It's such a beautiful scripture. Please see that. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. Okay, I'll read that. All of you, please put your eyes on that. Don't miss that. But now, rid yourselves completely of all these things. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene. That is, abusive Fill the vulgar language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off the old self with its evil practice. What it says? It says, you're supposed to strip off. She removed. What did she remove? What is fill the garment? What did God say Adam and Eve to do? To remove the leaves, right? What is he trying to say? To remove leaves means what? To not wear anything? What does that mean? It means to remove unrighteous acts. Because they did unrighteous acts, because they disobeyed, they became shameful. They are condemned to death. So God is saying, wear the righteousness, wear the glory of God, put on. So when you are going to remove, what are you removing? You are removing what? Strip off, strip off the old nature, it says. Strip off the filthy garment. The, your, your righteousness are like filthy rags. Strip off the old nature means what? What was the old nature that we had? Rage, bitterness, fornication, jealousy, idolatry, witchcraft, uh, comparison, uh, thinking bad about others. All the evil nature that we had, the Bible says strip off the evil nature. Strip off. Why? Why to strip off? Because you are the righteousness of God. Because you are the son of God, because you are the bride of Christ, you are the righteousness of God, strip off the old nature. Strip it off. What is that old nature? It says 
obscene. What is obscene? So beautifully explained. Purposely, I put amplified version. Why? Does, what does it explain? Obscene means abusive, filthy language. I have to explain because now it's become so common in schools and colleges. Everybody uses bad word. It is common language. Everybody uses, everybody sings bad words. I also see bad words. I also sing bad words. I also listen. No. What you listen to, you're training your mind. You're tuning your mind. Please stop listening to anything bad. Any abusive language movie is there. You're watching some movie. It has a lot of abusive language, a lot of crime. Don't watch that. It is not entertainment. It is brainwashing session by Satan to you. So don't watch that. Don't see the change. Watch some other movie. Watch something entertaining. Watch something good. Rather watching some has so much of abusive language, singing abusive language. Everybody is using. No. The Bible says strip off that nature. You cannot use vulgar words. Why? You are not like the world. You are the righteousness of God. You have to speak like God. You have to do things like God. We are imitators of God. Strip off that nature and put on. Every day you put on. Why every day you put on? You are righteousness. How do you put on? How do you put on the righteousness? First thing, only through the knowledge, understanding that you are the righteousness. Second thing, you confess, right? You confess, I am the righteousness of God. You put on righteousness. And when you put on, when you are clothed yourself, then you are able to perform the righteous deeds. Now you understand why father gave coat of many colors. Coat of many colors is given to beloved son. Now you are the beloved son of God, right? You and I are the beloved sons of God, right? So what he gave us, he gave us coat of many colors. Because coat of many colors is the robe of righteousness. We are his beloved. When we are his beloved, when we are the righteousness of God, we have to strip off our old nature, put on the new nature. That helps us to produce the acts of righteousness. Thank you so much. It helps us to produce the acts of righteousness. Will you all give cl uh, cl claps and encourage Sandrine? Thank you for that uh, thing. I, I wanted to show you that uh, this picture to remain in your mind that every day you are to put on your uniform. Every day you have to put on Christ. Why? Even a person, uh, who, whoever is saying that uh, I am a widow, I am fatherless, I am single, I am unmarried, I am going through pain, I am feeling lonely in my life. I want to tell you, when you put on the robe of righteousness, when you put on Christ, you will not feel lonely. You will not feel rejected. You will not feel that there is no one for you because you are dressed up like royalty. You will not go with inferiority. Oh, I am incomplete. Somebody has to complete me. You are not incomplete. You are complete in Christ, says the word of God. Just because you are unmarried doesn't mean you are incomplete. Just because you are a widow doesn't mean you are incomplete. You, when you wear the robe of righteousness, you are walking like a king. You are walking like a queen. And for that, you don't have to be married or uh, be some height and some weight or something. You have to just know that this is your standard. This is your position. Because you have position as the righteousness of God, you put on the function of the righteousness of God. Putting on, that is you strip off that nature and you think like God. You do things like God. And you understand, because I am the beloved of God, he has given me coat of many colors. Because I'm beloved of God, he, have given, he has given me the robe of righteousness. Jesus took the scarlet robe and Jesus has given me the robe of righteousness. Today I wear the garments. It's so beautiful. It says garments of salvation. Now do you understand when Paul says wear the, put on the armor of God. By, by putting on the armor of God, what's the first thing you put? Breastplate of righteousness, right? The armor of God. So when you're wearing the garments, you wear the vest, you wear t-shirts, you wear coat, you wear blouse, you wear sari, you wear salwar, you wear dupatta, right? It is pieces of garment. Similarly, garments of salvation. So when you're wearing the garments of salvation, what is the thing that you put on? You put on uh, righteousness. So now you're not ashamed. You're not ashamed or guilty or you're not afraid that your face will be put to shame. They that look to the Lord will shine like radiance. Their faces are never never covered in shame. You don't have to be in shame because you're fat. You don't have to be in shame because you're uh, tall or short or black or fair. You don't have to be in shame because God does not see you in your color, in your race, in your size. 
He sees you as the righteousness of God. He sees you as his beloved child of God. The day you see yourself like that, that day you will reign in life. Amen, amen. We believe you were blessed by this message. Our vision is to make known the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you. You can be a blessing by partnering with Priya Abraham Ministries to share this good news. To partner, visit priyaabraham.org slash partner.